It is without a doubt harder to be a man than a woman. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly why. You know what's funny? I will be labeled an incel, and I've been labeled an incel and a misogynist just because I talk about men's issues. But why wouldn't I? Men have issues just like women, and we need to address these problems, otherwise we see things like the rate of suicide only increasing for men. But we don't wanna do anything about it because we're worried what people say about us. I won't cop that. I will continue to speak out. Just for raising the possibility that men have it tough in life, you are automatically a bigot. That's madness. In saying that, who cares? What, I'm not supposed to speak the truth because I'm worried what people will think about me? Never. The woman in question saw a Reddit post from a transgender individual who became a man and couldn't believe what it was like. And we're gonna have a seat and watch that reaction. Shout out to Abba and Preach who I saw this video on their channel. Very good channel, go and check them out. But before we do, this video is brought to you by the great people at Established Titles. Ladies and gentlemen, I am now a Lord. You can refer to me as Lord Isaac Butterfield, but don't get too jelly, don't do it, because you can be a Lord or a lady as well. All you have to do is go and check out Established Titles right now. Their title packages are absolutely amazing. What it is, is you can buy a square foot of land in Scotland through established titles, and then, because of the historic Scottish customs, you are now a lord or a lady. This is an absolutely brilliant last minute gift idea or a gift for yourself, because if you wanna fly on a plane and be a lord, then this is the perfect way to do it. And it doesn't stop there. You'll also get an individual plot number, so you'll be able to be, if you buy now, be neighbors with me. Isn't that amazing? On top of that, they also plant a tree for every purchase made, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, established titles is fun. It's great. People love this type of stuff. I bought it for members of my family and they absolutely love it. And they're having a massive sale right now. And if you use the code BFIELD10, you'll get an extra 10% off. That's absolutely brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, head over to establishedtitles.com forward slash BFIELD10 and become a lord today and support the channel, and support them. All right, lords, ladies, let's sit down. On with the video. So there's this viral tweet going around from a Tumblr account from a person I'm named Tumblr. Zan, who is a trans man, detailing the culture shock he's experienced post-transition. Okay, post so it took a woman to speak out about what men are going through to finally make people give a shit. That's hilarious. So I'm just gonna straight up read most of Zan's post to you because I thought it was incredibly perceptive and I wanna amplify it, but I don't wanna risk messing up his words or his message. So, so here we go. <clears throat> I'm pretty quiet about the fact that I'm a- Hang on a second. You wanna be respectable yet you throw a mustache on. I don't know, I think that's a little bit naughty. I don't think you should do that. I think someone's gonna get offended. Not all men, not all trans men have facial hair. And it is in fact very triggering for you to even state that. Absolutely disgraceful. It's like me sitting here pretending to be a trans woman and pulling my shorts up that I'm wearing to reveal a camel toe. I'll do it, I'll do it. Pretty quiet about the fact that I'm a trans man, but holy shit, I need to tell you about the culture shock I'm going through because it's blindsiding me. I imagine becoming a man and then being around other men would be very, very different. We just do things differently. Particularly when we're around each other, men do weird shit. The things that we get up to, you would not believe, ladies. Like, let me tell this story to you. I have a friend, and I think everyone has a very similar friend like this. A bit of a loose dude, can't really hold down a relationship. This guy, we'd play footy on the weekend and then we'd go back to the, back to the pub for a couple of beers. It'd be a big game, we'd be all battered and bruised and blood and all that shit, all that man shit. And we'd get back to the pub we get blind drunk. We wouldn't even eat, we didn't give a fuck, right? No water, no hydration. And you know what he'd do to impress all the boys? He would get a piece of wood. He would get a nail and a hammer. He would then reveal his ball sack and put a nail through his ball sack into the wood with the hammer. It's a true story. And as little Dixon gives me my morning coffee, thank you, dear. <laughs> That's a true story, isn't it? Unfortunately, she God. says. Thank you, dear. Oh, that's horrendous. It goes further than that. When I was at school, do you know how all the boys in the morning would greet each other? We'd walk up to each other and sack whack one another. Whack them on the sack. Hit them in the balls. The most painful area on a man drops a man. Like, it's you don't have any control over it. It drops you. They walk up to each other and just sack whack 
each other. There was this weird like month at school when I was at school where prodding was a thing. If someone bent over to tie their shoe or whatever, you'd walk up behind them and fucking try and fist their asshole. It was like, that's a true story too. Weird times, weird times. I did go to a private boys school and the people doing the prodding were the teachers. Weird, weird. That's not true, but it probably could be true. And the fact that that's funny is because it's the truth. Don't go to a private school. You're gonna get fucked. Point being, if you become a man, it's a culture shock. There is this huge sense of social isolation that comes with being perceived as male because now people are subconsciously treating me as a potential predator. Okay, fair point. Like if you were a woman on Monday, right? And you walk behind another lady on the street, maybe it was like around six o'clock at night, a little bit dark, uh, she wouldn't really care. But if you came back on Tuesday and you were then a man, you had transitioned, she would be terrified. And that sucks. And I hate the fact that women have to feel like that. I mean, I feel like that too, if some weird dude's walking behind me. Like, I just do. Particularly if they're bigger than you or they look a bit weird. You know, they might have a knife or a gun or whatever. These are the situations that have to go through your head because that's how you remain safe. It's unfortunate, but it's how you remain safe. I know a lot of people say, hey, we need a safer world and we do. But what do you do? You can't just wish it. It doesn't just appear, right? This is how society and the world has been for, for all time. Like men are dangerous creatures. It's not good and it's not, I don't like it, but I don't like it, but. It's just, it is the way it is. In saying all that, I don't think it's fair that the media treat it like all men are, are dangerous, all men are potential rapists. That's not fair. I also think it's shit that the media say that women shouldn't have to look after themselves. Okay, you shouldn't have to in a perfect world, but that's not where we live. I also absolutely despise, and this is happening all over Australia at the moment, that men will get blamed for rape, men will get blamed for murder, men will get blamed for sexual assault, rather than the actual perpetrators. Have a look at this. Instead of telling our girls not to walk through parks, maybe we should be telling our boys not to rape them. In doing so, by blaming all of men for the evils in the world, men become enemy number one. Men become the fear of women, the number one fear of, of ladies all over the globe. And that's not a good thing. And also translates not just to men, but to young boys. We have young boys who go to primary school or, or, or they're six or seven years old and their classmates who are female see them as future predators. That's atrocious. All strangers, no matter their gender, keep their guard up around me. It made me realize that there is no inherent camaraderie in male socialization, like there is in female socialization. Yeah, I guess the ladies out there, it's all the yachts queens immediately. Whenever you see another girl, it's yachts queens and, and fucking nails and shit. But for men, like we don't like other strangers who are men. We just don't because they've always been a threat throughout thousands of years of human evolution. You see another male who is a stranger, he's probably going to kill you and that's built into us. It's much like the animal kingdom. They don't trust other males. There's something about testosterone flowing through your blood that just makes people inherently pot. The possibility of violence is always there. Unless of course, it's in very specific environments. And the fact that I don't ambiently experience this mutual kinship in basic exchanges anymore is an insanely lonely feeling. Loneliness is the biggest issue facing men across the globe. That and the fact that masculinity is vilified for everything, blamed for everything. Those two things destroy men. I mean, we often talk about how, you know, it's so beautiful being, women are beautiful and, and the femininity is wonderful. But yet everything that's male is demonized. And I don't think that is a healthy thing. I don't think that fixes anything. And I think it creates more problems than it even potentially patches up. I think that's why we gravitate to sport or we gravitate to groups that like the same thing. That, that's how we find friends as adult men or even as children. This is all something that women very rarely experience. Like, Actual loneliness, like maybe if you're a really ugly chick with a big fucking growth on your fucking forehead, I don't know. But it's unlikely that you'll see true loneliness ever in your life. Why? Because men still want to be around you. Like they, they are desperate to be around you. Men don't care. Any holes a goal, that's real. Sure, you might feel sad and a little bit lonely every now and then, but there's someone out there who would take you on in an instant. Men don't have that. I guess it's female privilege. For men, loneliness is the biggest killer out there, I feel. And without that connection to other men or masculinity or things that blokes do, that's why they break. That's why they crumble. And that's why they kill themselves. Their minds disintegrate into what only can be described as rubble of their former selves. 
and suicide often follows. You know how bad this would have fucked up my mind if I had grown up like this? It is 4.30 a.m. and I, I'm mourning the loss of a privilege I didn't know I had. Frankly, this is something I would have never understood without living the experience. It is now blatantly clear to me that most cis men probably experience chronic emotional malnutrition. Chronic emotional malnutrition. Now, this is an issue where the blame is always shifted in a certain direction and I think it's really interesting. Whenever we talk about men's issues, violence or, or addiction or loneliness, whatever, we always end up blaming masculinity, men, or things that dudes do. We blame men for men's problems. With women's problems, it's funny, we also blame men. So you wonder why men feel so alone in this world where everything's going against them and everyone's telling them how bad they are and how violent they are and they're perpetrators and yet we're supposed to fix ourselves? What? To take something from your world, you're victim blaming. That's what you're doing. Is it helpful to say to someone when they're depressed, hey, it's your fault? No, no, it's not. What's more, it's even harder when it's about something you can't change, like your gender. Yeah, you heard me. This deprivation comes from all sides of the aisle, by the way. In the case of women, when I'm out in public and interact with them, all of them come off as incredibly aloof, cold, and mirthless. Now, I understand this, because a lot of dudes are very creepy. And like, I could sit here and go, not all dudes are creepy. A lot of dudes are pretty creepy. I'm sure I've been a creep in the past, and if I crept on you, I'm sorry. That's a young dude or a young version of me doing dumb shit. And I think that's a part of men that they just need to learn. And they need to, if they don't pull their heads in and they get to 30 and they're still being a mad creep, then okay, yeah, sure, they're fucking idiots. But young dudes creeping, and when I say creeping, they're like, you know, chatting up girls and all that type of stuff. But I think in the same respect, like girls do that to men, but they just always, they always get the guy. Guys just need to sort of cast their net wider. It's like commercial fishing. Like it's damaging, but you have to do it. <laughs> Trust me when I say that women aren't just being needlessly guarded. But I only have complete understanding of this context because I've experienced female socialization. If I hadn't, I would have thought this coldness was a conspiracy against me devised by roughly half the human population. Yeah, I, I guess you can sort of think that there is a conspiracy out against you as a man because like you, all you hear in the papers and the, and the news and the, and the articles online and all that type of shit, YouTube videos, TikToks, that men are the bad people in the world, men are the enemy, we need to stop men. Yeah, I can't imagine why we think there's a conspiracy. And as for male socialization, again, it seems taboo for a man to be platonically intimate with men for reasons I have yet to fully understand. But I think it boils down to A, the fact that society teaches boys that it's not okay to be soft with each other, and B, garden variety homophobia. I hug my mates, and you should hug your mates too. I love that shit. Like, don't go around sucking your mates dick, unless you want to, but I, Maybe I didn't do that when I was younger, but as I've gotten older and I see my mates less, um, you know, that's just what happens as you get older, I always hug them and I love them and I really do love them and care for them. I don't suck their dicks. Not yet. But men are not machines of war. Yeah, testosterone absolutely gives you dumb bastard brain. Ooh, dumb bastard brain. Does it? What about if you're a trans person taking testosterone? Does that give you dumb bastard brain? Like it's a joke, I get it and that's fine. You can make that joke. But the problem with making that joke is if I made the same joke about women with estrogen, then you'd fucking have the shit to me. If I said ladies on their period with all the hormones carrying on are fucking nutbags, insane people and should be locked up, you'd be mad. And that's the problem with this thing. You can't have it both ways, mate. All I want is equality. The human species looks so much colder standing from this side. I can see how men might convince themselves that their feelings of emotional desperation is personal weakness, as opposed to a symptom they're experiencing from white imperialism. You were doing so well. You can't blame this on white, oh for fuck. Fuck! Being a woman is hard. I'm not disputing that. My wife is pregnant at the moment and seeing what she is going through is absolutely just like, it's ridiculous. Like, I cannot believe that that's what women have to go through. That's madness. And the fact that women have been doing that for millennia, fucking Jesus Christ, ladies. And I also think about when she was young, um, not a weird boy. Um, <laughs> I also think about when she was young and the pressures put on her by society. I don't think that's fair. I also, I push the question, where do those pressures come from? Do they come from the models themselves? You see on Instagram right now, they blame men for the, the beauty standards, but it's the Instagram models that are posting the pics. Come on. If you don't want to do that, 
You don't have to. There's no doubt, and let's admit it, that there is male privilege, but there's also female privilege as well. Most of the billionaires in the world are men, and that is a privilege, but it's a very small amount. There's not many of them. And really, if you look at men as a whole, to quote Henry David Thoreau, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. And that is the truth. And that is why men kill themselves five times more than women. They're sad. And that's fucked up. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think in the comment section below.